The intent of this video is to provide an overview of the B-17 bomber's ball turret and look at some of the ball turret's external features. The ball turret is part of the B-17's defensive armament system. The ball turret gunner is responsible for protection from German fighter interceptors who are within the turret's arc travel field of fire. The ball turret was designed by the Sperry Corporation. There were two major variations of the ball turret adopted by the B-17, the early A-2 and the later A-2A. The later model eliminated the collector ring and housing assembly and the plexiglass cover over the end bell assembly. I will be focusing in on the later model. The crew member assigned to the ball turret was usually selected based on his physical size. The crew member with the smallest stature was usually selected as a ball turret gunner. The ball turret gunner operated the turret on his back in the fetal position. The ball turret was not pressurized, heated, or insulated. Since the B-17s operated at altitudes between 25 and 30,000 feet, the ball turret gunner flew in this position while on life support. He was on mechanically fed oxygen at altitudes above 10,000 feet. Temperatures of the ball turret cavity were around minus 50 degrees Fahrenheit. The crew member wore a full body electric suit to provide supplemental body heat. They plugged their suits into the turret's rheostat. The turret's interior volume was small. Most crew members did not wear a parachute or flak armor garments due to their bulk. They were required to wear a life vest and parachute harness though. The parachute would be placed close to the fuselage by the turret. The crew member occupying the turret was well protected by the ball turret's armor and indirectly by its systems and components. The turret's armor was designed to stop a standard 30 caliber bullet. The gunner seat was fabricated from a 0.6 inch thick steel plate. The turret's curved bottom panel was constructed from a 0.26 inch thick steel plate and covered the gunner's lower back. The turret's curved entry hatch was fabricated from a cast aluminum and was considered part of the ball turret's armor system. The hatch was also 0.26 inches thick and covered the gunner from his upper back to his neck. The Browning machine gun casings and interior parts were constructed from steel and could stop just about any projectile. The gunner's lower legs were shielded by these machine guns. Multiple layers of ammo belts were draped above the gunner and shielded the gunner from overhead projectile. The turret's gun sight casing was fabricated from cast aluminum and housed steel parts and would have some stopping power from flak projectiles, 20mm cannon splinters, and bullets. Another survivability consideration is that since the gunner is occupying the station while in the fetal position, his body will be less exposed to projectiles. The U.S. Army Air Force has studied the distribution of wounds based on returning bomber crew positions during November 1942 through December 1943. More bombers were destroyed by fighters than ground artillery flak in this period. The data showed that ball turret gunners and co-pilots experienced fewer combat wounds than any of the other crew positions. However, this conclusion suffers from survivor bias and other studies have shown that the ball turret gunner's survivability were about in the middle of the pack. If a ball turret gunner needed to bail out, he will need to egress the ball turret by rotating the turret gun straight down, open the hatch, and climb into the fuselage. The turret guns will need to be repositioned with the barrels facing aft. This step is needed so crew members assigned to jump out of the bomb bay don't contact the barrels. He will then attach a parachute to his harness and await by the aft crew door for the abandoned plane order. He will be jumping right after the right waist gunner. If the plane was to belly land, crews were instructed to jettison the ball turret. The plane's turret would become a landing hazard and needed to be removed prior to setting down. The unbolting of the ball turret will take about 20 minutes. Crews were to consider salvaging the expensive Sperry K3 gun sight if feasible. Removing the gun sight from the ball turret would take an additional 20 minutes. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to the channel, World War II U.S. Bombers.